How do you respond to a ship that is sinking? You know that it is sinking. You can see it sinking, particularly the cities. You cannot prevent it from sinking. No, because only Allah can destroy Gog and Magog. If you are not convinced that Gog and Magog have been released, and that we are now living in a world in which Gog and Magog control power, and Gog and Magog explains the universal facade. If you have not been convinced, then we cannot proceed with the Muslim village. You can continue to live in Johannesburg. If, on the other hand, you are, you recognize the universal facade in the world today, and you recognize that this is the work of Gog and Magog, then you would know that you cannot prevent the ship from sinking. If you are on board a sinking ship, and when the ship sinks, it's going to take all those who are on board, even those who build a fifteen million rand wood masjid, oh, you can see like a palace. <coughs> and the masjid is full with people. <laughs> but when the ship sinks, it's going down with all of them. <coughs> what do you do? Our answer in this retreat is simple. You've got to get off the ship. Do we have any parallel in the Quran? Yes, we do. In which surah? Surah al <laughs> Yes. And we have in this retreat <coughs> explained that subject. That the young men lived in a world which was saturated with shit. They could not prevent the shit. They stood up and they denounced the shit. They stood up and they declared their faith in Allah. Fearlessly. But the the town, the city in which they live, demonized them, terrorized them, as the world does today with us, who dare to proclaim our faith in Islam and to stand up and tell them you are a godless <coughs> world, you are an oppressor. Not all Muslims are like that, unfortunately. There are some who prefer to put the job first and Allah after. Put the green card first and put Allah after. Put the U.S. visa first and put Allah after. Put the house in which they live in Rondabosh first and put Allah after. <laughs> and such people, such people will not do what the young men in Surah al did, who stood up and declared their faith fearlessly. Only those who do that, only those who stand up for al-ma'ruf and stand up against al-munkar. And this is our mission. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin-nas ukhrijat lin-nas ta'muruna bil-ma'ruf wa tanhawna alil munkar what we took me to Nabilla. This is the mission that Allah gave to us. To stand up for what is truth and for what is justice. And to stand up against what is false and what is unjust and oppressive. Only those Muslims who fulfill this mission, only they are targeted. The rest can go home and have braai for dinner and go to sleep. You know it's braai now. That's what you had for dinner last night. <coughs> no, 
but they don't call it barbecue in Cape Town. They call it braai. I can't pronounce it, but something like that, braai. So, <laughs> these young men gave us the model of Kanda. The model of Kanda. If you stand up like this in the United States today, you lose your job. No question about it. You lose your job. And then your wife is going to take a pot and beat you on your head. Your children are going to curse you. Because we're going to have to leave the United States now, and this is heaven. We're going to have to leave heaven to go back to hell in Pakistan. Daddy, why did you do this? <laughs> huh? These young men stood up and gave us the model of conduct, becoming of the believer in the age of Ita. And eventually they had to flee. They had to make a hijra. Have you ever heard about the word hijra? You have? Hijra? Is it sunnah? It is? Is it Sunnah of Muhammad Is it also the Sunnah of Ibrahim Look at that. This is Hijra. Rather than stay back and strike a deal, rather than stay back and compromise to keep your job and keep your wife happy. Oh, sometimes it's the wife who wants to go. They've been writing to me, women have been writing to me. The husband doesn't want to leave. He wants to stay in heaven. <laughs> the other way around. If you stand up like this, then you have to leave. And these young men left. This is getting off the ship and they fled to the cave. And when they fled to the cave, how did Allah respond? I'm not talking about your boss and your company. I'm talking about Allah, the one who created you from a drop of sperm. Allah was pleased with their conduct. Fa'u ila al flee to the cave. What comes after? Yang shurlakum rabbukum mi rahmati ila akhir al Allah will shower you with his mercy. What more do you want from that than that to get off the ship? So now welcome to the subject of getting off the ship, or rather getting off the sinking ship. What do we do if we are to get off the sinking ship? Our first obligation is to try to establish the Deen wherever we can. So you're not jumping off the ship to go off on your own. Tom going so, Harry going so, Dick going so, Mahmoud going so, Ali going so. No. <laughs> Your first obligation when you're getting off the ship is to recognize that you cannot restore macro-Islam at this time. You cannot restore the Khilafah. You cannot restore Darul Islam because the forces of Gog and Magog are too powerful for you. If you're not convinced that Gog and Magog have been released, then you would not recognize that this is the Gog and Magog world order. Okay? In which case we'll ask you, well, how come you don't go and search for the barrier? Build a barrier, build a, build a blocks of iron, please go and search for it for us. And ask Google Earth to help you. We cannot restore Darul Islam today. If you want to, you could try. Even, uh, uh, what's his name, in Mullah Omar, in the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, when they controlled Afghanistan and declared the Emirate of Afghanistan, 
even they were begging to be admitted to the United Nations organization, to be recognized as a legitimate government of Afghanistan. And therefore, once they are recognized as a legitimate government of Afghanistan, which they were begging and begging the UN to accept, they would now have been will have acceded to the Charter of the United Nations. And the Charter of the United Nations gives authority to the Security Council over the Khalifa. When the Security Council says to the Khalifa, sit down, he has to sit down. Didn't Mullah Omar think about that? <laughs> and when the Security Council says to the Khalifa, stand up, he has to stand up. Because the Security Council must be obeyed. So no way in the world do we have Darul Islam today. And it is not possible to restore Darul Islam because you need to control, you have sovereignty over territory. And they will allow you to have that. They want to rule the world. Our conclusion is that if we cannot restore macro Islam, we still have a duty to establish the deen, Waqim al-Deen. And therefore we option, our option is the micro model to establish Islam at the micro level. Where can we do that? It cannot be done in the cities because the cities are the centers of the war on Islam. And so our conclusion is not a cave, no, they chose a cave. Not a cave. Why? Because our first option is to <coughs> establish the deen. When we try and we fail to establish the deen, then the cave. So we say, let us go to the countryside, where the storm is not blowing so fiercely. Let us go to the remote countryside. And in the remote countryside, let us establish micro models, so small communities. And this is what we call a village. The Malay have a nice word for it. What is it? No Malay must answer me. No Singaporean must answer me. What do you call it? Kampung. Kampung. Were you from Put? <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes. And uh, there is another reason why we should choose Kampung. Kampong meaning the village. There's another reason why we should choose Kampong. Because Dajjal spoke to Tamim Dari, the Hadith of Sahih Muslim. And, and uh, Dajjal asked Tamim Dari a number of questions. And at the end of it, Dajjal declared, I am Dajjal. And when I am released, I'll have, I will enter every town and every city, but he didn't mention Kampu. And the evidence is fair. That when you go to the remote countryside today, you will see a way of life which is as yet not corrupted by the city. When, of course, you see the mini skirts coming into a village, you know that, that that village is being embraced by the city. So the Muslim village has a rationale behind it. It has a metaphysics based on the release of Gog and Magog and of Dajjal. When we move to the Muslim village, it is for the purpose of seeking to establish the deen at the micro level. How do we do that? If we can move to an existing village, it's easier than creating a new village brand new that takes time and resources. <coughs> 